I was out hunting this morning and got a nice deer. Uh, what we're going to do is do a field dressing video this morning. And we're going to try to take you through every process of field dressing this deer. And then tomorrow we'll do another video on skinning. And then the next day we'll do one on processing the meat. This will get you from the field all the way into where you're eating this deer. And uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to start at the rear end of the deer, get that ready to go. We're going to take loose the penis and the scrotum. I'm going to cut a circle around the, the anus, and that way when I split him up the middle here, I'll be able to reach up in and I'll be able to drag all the innards right out the back. And we'll show you that as we go. And uh, this here is the anus right here. We're gonna, I'm going to hold that up in the air. And uh, what you do is you get your knife right in here. Make sure you always have a sharp knife. Cut right around the anus, the skin. Right, like so, and then go go in against the pelvic bone. You can feel that knife slide around there. And another thing I want to tell you is, is wear your latex gloves. Anyway, you can grab that anus and just cut around there, like so. And I cut up in there. And what this does is this saves you from breaking that bladder wide open in there. And when you get ready to pull that loose, you'll end up having everything come right out with it. Now I'm going to spread his legs apart a little bit here so you can see. I'm a, I've got his scrotum and his penis here. What I do is I grab the penis, make a little, make a cut right like so. And what that does, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come down each side here. And with the dough it would be the mammary glands. You'd have your mammary glands right in here. Just go ahead and take those right off of there. And I'm going to go right down the hip here. Right down the pelvis to where I cut. And you can see this scrotum and penis here. I'm going to cut that loose. And see how that just kind of falls back to the back, right like so. Just keep cutting it. Keep cutting it. And you just throw that off to the side. Okay, now what we're going to do... And I'm going to split this pelvis right here. See how easy that is to split with your knife? Take that. And you got that. That'll help you lay your legs open a little more. What we're going to do is I'm going to split this up a little bit here to about here. And I'll show you what, as we go along what we're going to do as we go. But anyway, you grab this here. You just take and put your knife in here and make a little bitty slit. What you want to do is you just want to get through the muscle wall. You don't want to get into the guts. And here we are, right here. You can see I've got the hole here. Here's his intestines. What you want to do is you're going up. You want to get your fingers in here like so. And you created a space right here. And you just take your knife and just go like so. And that'll cut right up. And I mean, if you got a sharp knife, it sure saves you a lot of work. And you can see how I'm holding that up. And I'm not getting into the guts there at all. And here we go. We're, I'm just going to go ahead and hold that up. Just keep your fingers under there. I'm working from the side a little bit. Uh, and I'm getting up to the bottom of the, the rib cage here. I'm, I'm hitting the sternum bone right here. You'll always know that when you hit that. Now, what happened here is we got a little stomach material. When I shot him in the shoulder, it angled down through. So... When we get him home, we'll make sure we wash him out with a hose. We'll hang him up and wash him out. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to a bigger knife. This is a knife that I use for delicate work. And I could split this rib cage with that if I wanted to, but I want to go to a heavier type knife. I always carry a couple knives with me. But this is a heavier type knife. And what I can do is I can get in that breastbone. And I can just rip that up. What you want to make sure is if anybody's helping you, don't have them stand right in front of you. And I'm going to rip this right like so. You see how easy that went? We're just going to keep going until we get all the way up. I'm not worried about saving the cape on this deer. This is a meat deer. We're just, and what we'll do is we'll split him right on up the throat. 
like so. And what you see is we got him all loose here now. And another, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut loose the trachea and the esophagus. They're right here in the neck. You'll see them. They're very easy to find. Uh, just cut that loose and pull that back a little. And now what we're going to do here, you've got everything opened up. You've got your heart, lungs, everything. And you can see right here this diaphragm, this meaty part. What you want to do is you want to cut all the way around that, just like so. And we're just going to go ahead and cut that loose. And what that'll do is we'll end up pulling that all the way out, all the way out through the butt. Grab the esophagus and trachea and just pull it and it should all come loose. Okay, what I'm going to do now, before I pull it loose, this is a, what I, I like to do. It makes for a nice clean job. Is I like to take and split the, the pelvic bone. Now you can see the bladder is right here. I hold that down out of the way. I'm going to take and split that pelvic bone. Because I don't want... I don't want anything in there. You gotta go easy. Split pretty easy. And what happens is uh, you split that and you'll be able to lay that wide open and that'll come, everything will come right on out. I'm getting the bladder off to the side here. There we go, we got that off. You see how easy that was? That bone is actually pretty soft. And here's your bladder right here. You could also take that and reach in and pull it out through the anus here. You pull the anus up through there if you wanted. But I find this is a much cleaner and easier way to do it. You take and put your saw back in your kit. I've got a kit that carries two knives and a saw here. Doesn't take up, doesn't take up hardly any room in your ditty bag. Just like so. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get up in here. I might have to cut some diaphragm loose, but we got him pretty well loose up here. We're going to pull him loose. You're going to see how everything's going to come right on out. You see that? Everything's coming loose. And if it stays, it gets hung up on that diaphragm, just reach in there and cut around. This here deer's got a lot of blood left in him. And you just keep pulling. Just like so. And just keep that diaphragm coming. Keep working around that diaphragm. Just like so. When you get that diaphragm loose, then everything is gonna come. And it's gonna come loose right now. I'm gonna take and pull that all loose, just like so just comes right out the rear end. You don't have any turds in there, you don't have anything. Now what we can do is we can pick this deer up or and let it drain out the bottom or we can turn him over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my knives out of the way because I'm done using them for now. I'll put them away. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this deer over so I get all the blood out of that cavity. I'm going to spread eagle him out like so. You can put him over a log or anything. What that does is all that blood gets out of there and other crap. We'll just let him sit for a few minutes. And then uh, my wife and I are going to drag him to the truck and hang him. And tomorrow we'll show you how to skin him. Okay, we field dressed this deer yesterday and uh, we hung it out and it got about 20 some degrees last night, chilled down real nice. What we're going to do is we're going to skin this out and we're going to save this skin for sending away. We want to get it tanned. You know, we've got a written narrative on skinning a deer, but you'll need a video to go with it or still shots. What we're going to do here is we're going to go right up here from the thigh, go straight up, go underneath the skin, don't ever go over the top. Because otherwise you'll end up with a bunch of hair on your meat. 
again. Right here is the tarsus gland. You don't want to go into that. And we're going to do this on both sides here. I'm going to be working a little bit backwards because of trying to get it on video. And now we've got two cuts right there. And then what we'll do is when we get down here, we'll spread these front legs apart and we'll end up cutting. Well, we'll do that right now. We'll cut these front legs. We'll go right from the joint here, the knee joint. Go right up that white, just like so. And go down there, and you'll come right out underneath, just like so. I'll go over here, and I'll do this one right here. Go right there at the knee. Go right up the white, like so. Right up into the armpit, and you'll end up coming right out there on the brisket. And... Uh, this is a little different knife for doing this fine work. What I'll do is I'll switch to a skinning knife when I'm skinning it. You can do it with this knife if you want, but I use a skinning knife. And uh, see, we got to cut here, we got to cut here. So make sure we cut all the way through right here. I don't know if I, I think, yeah, I got it all the way. Anyway, when we get down there, then the skin will. We'll go down. If you don't cut these first, then your skin will overlap the top, and you'll end up not being able to get it from there. What we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and start peeling this skin away like so. Now you can peel some of it away by hand, and then just use your knife to assist you a little bit. Always go underneath. Don't cut through this big tendon, because of the way I got it hung, if I cut through that big tendon, I'm going to lose this deer on the ground, and we don't want that. What we do is we just get this started. We'll be able to pull this a little bit, like so. See that? And then when we get this up there, I get these ringed around the back legs. We'll be able to pull this hide right on down. Okay, I'm going to work on this one here a little bit. And get that loose. Always wear rubber. Always wear your gloves. That way, uh, if your deer or animal has anything, you won't catch it. Hopefully it doesn't have anything. You'll, uh, the deer set up real nice during the night. You always want to, before you get, we're going to butcher this deer today too. You always want to have this, your meat cold. If you try to butcher it when it's warm, it's, it's a lot harder. Your meat isn't set up. You can't cut it very well. It's uh... anyway. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to go up underneath here, and I'm going to go around the the leg from underneath. You can see this right here. Always underneath. That way you don't have to worry about hair on the meat. We're going to swing that around. We're going to swing that around. I'm going to try to stay out of your way so you can see this. And, uh, you see how that come, that's coming loose? Okay, now we're going to go right, right behind that tendon. Always go from underneath. There's probably about a million different ways to skin a deer. And I've probably done most of them. But, uh, you can see how that just kind of peels off of there, both legs, that leg there. And then we'll, uh, in just a second here, we'll get down around the butt end. We'll cut through the tail and peel this deer right on down. And you'll be surprised how easy this skin comes off. Okay, we're back here. We're going to go up the leg here, the back of the leg. You can see this tarsus gland. There's a lot of oils and that on there. You do not want to get that, that on your knife. You can cut those off, but don't use that knife until you wash it for doing the rest of your skinning. Uh, when I was younger, before I knew anything, I used to do that, but not anymore. It gives it a real bad uh, taste. What we're doing is we're going around here, always from underneath. And that keeps that hair to a minimum. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to set my knife down for a second. I'm going to grab this right here. 
then you can see that it'll pull right on down like so. We do one side, then what we're going to do, we're going to do the other side, just like so. Now we're going to cut this tail loose. See, I went right through that joint, and that tail come right loose. Got that tail loose, went right through the joint here. Uh, we'll, I'm going to set my knife down. Don't do any pulling in that with your knife and your hand, but you see how, how this uh, hide peels off there really nice. We'll just uh, keep pulling her down. Now, I've run into a spot here where it's a little bit touchy. It's, it's not pulling away as good as I thought, but you, you can work that down just like so. Okay, we're going to turn him around a little bit. And you can see what we did when we got home yesterday, we hosed this deer out. Make sure he was nice and clean. Took us a little bit, but we got her. Okay, what we're doing is we're cutting right down. Just taking this and getting this hide down. Just keep peeling her down. Okay. We uh, raised this deer up a little bit more so we didn't get to, won't get the hide on the ground. I want to keep the side nice and clean. So when we get ready to send it away, it'll be in good shape. Uh, had to stoke up the campfire a little bit. Here we go. We're just going to go ahead and pull this hide down and you'll see how it comes down pretty darn easy. See how easy that hide comes down, and uh, we're just going to keep pulling it down. And you see, it comes down even, even over here where I cut. I got a little bit of meat there, but I can get that with my fingers here. Pull that loose, and then we'll go around this other side. Same thing. You'll end up pulling it away from here where we got the cut. See that? Now that's about where you're going to end up with all your pulling. And if you do this while it's warm, you got a place to hang a deer where it's warm, where it's cool. It's a lot easier to skin when it's warm. But we wanted this meat to be set up real nice today so we could uh, end up uh, butchering it also, getting it all ready to go for the frying pan. Okay, here we go. Now what I'm going to do is get, I'm going to get my knife. I'm going to skin down around the legs. Like so, I'm gonna get the inside here. This is this is some that will not end up coming loose. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just go ahead and cut that loose like so. And when you get ready to flush your skin, you can end up you can end up uh, flushing this meat and fat off of there. But I'm gonna go ahead. And Pull that down like so. You see, kind of see how I pull that away from that. See how that leg came out of there? But you'll end up with a little hair on here. You know, you can't get all keep all the hair off. But what you can do is you take a propane torch before you butcher it, just singe that hair off. And it works real nice for doing that. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this loose here from the bottom side. That way I don't have any extra hair floating around. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to cut this one loose too. And we'll pull that down. We'll set the knife down because I don't want to get cut. And we'll pull that down just like so. See how that, we've got this leg pulled down. We're going to go ahead and cut that loose. Always from the bottom so you don't get any hair. Okay, now we got everything loose except for the neck. I'm going to turn this around a little bit. I'm going to cut this loose. The neck's a little bit harder to get loose. I'll tell you another thing you do not want to do. Uh, what you don't want to do is if it's warm weather, is uh, wash a deer out and hang it by its feet. Otherwise what happens is that water will go down into the throat cavity and it'll spoil your deer. Uh, it was cold enough, I knew that wasn't going to happen, so we went ahead and did ours this way. 
because we also wanted it to be able to skin it out. You can skin it out from the neck down, but uh, this is a lot better if you're going to do a cape for a deer. You just let that fall right down as you're going. We're just going to keep peeling this down the neck because there's a lot of good meat on the neck. Uh, what you do is you kind of fillet that off the bone and you can make a nice neck roast out of it. Or you can make, turn it into burger or sausage or whatever. But on a big deer, you get so much meat off of there you can have a nice neck roast. It's pretty darn good. A lot of people throw the neck away. That's kind of a waste of meat. But, okay, what we got now is we got this deer. I'm going to cut the hide away right here. I'm going from the underside like so. What we're going to do is go all the way around. We got this hide done. You see, there's not a lot of meat left on it. We can flush that off. Uh, I'm gonna lay that down right here. And here's what you have left. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get ready to butcher this deer too. Uh, you'll make what you can do is uh, make a cut around the shoulder. You can feel the shoulder blade. Make your cut here. Come around here. And get that whole shoulder off. That's one shoulder. You turn this around, do the same thing. You can see that shoulder blade in here moving. Take your knife, cut around, go all the way up into here. Take that shoulder off. Then what you do is you take your back straps off right down through here. Just put your knife right up against the bone, like so. And along the ribs, and you'll peel that right out of there. And then you'll cut your hind quarters out. You'll cut here, all the way around. And then down here, and you'll be able to pop that right out of the hip joint. And then you'll have everything ready to go for uh, doing your uh, butchering. So I'm going to get my other knife, and we're going to go ahead and dismantle this deer right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dismantle this deer, lay the quarters right on the hide. I'm going to get my other knife. This is a good butcher knife and a skinning knife. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get right in here. And you can see how that comes out around there, like so. This is where the arrow went through, so this shoulder is going to be a little bit bloody. We'll take and fix that up when we get ready to butcher it. You see how that shoulder come right off of there? And what you did, you didn't ruin this back strap underneath. This is all part of the back strap, right up into here. You cut that loose and you'll have a nice piece of meat there that you can use for steaks or roast. But anyway, that's the first front quarter. We'll lay that right on the hide. The hide is nice and clean. We'll turn him around. And we'll do exactly the same. Let's see, we'll go right about here. Go underneath. And you can pull that right up, right apart like so. Cut underneath. Follow kind of use the ribs and the shoulder as a guide. And if you look from underneath here, you can see how that kind of spreads apart like so. What you can do is take your knife, put it right up here, and just follow that right around. And there you go, you got your other front quarter that's gonna come off real nice, just like so. And you've got your back strap in here still. You're gonna lay that down there on your hide. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this deer down a little bit. What we're going to do now is we're going to take the back straps out. Uh, and then what we'll do is we're going to lower this down and get the hind quarters off. Because if you try to take one hind quarter off here, you're going to lose it because you'll be all cockeyed there. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to take this knife and we're going to go right down alongside the backbone. Just like so. Just split that down. All the way to you, you can feel the ribs. And then what you're going to do is I'm going to come over here. He's going to cut down like so. 
and then you got to just keep following that down up to here. You can, you can, you're right up against the ribs there. And you can see this line right through here. You can feel your ribs. You, you, you're going to end up uh, filleting that almost. What happens is you'll end up with a nice piece of meat like so. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and cut that right on out of there. You'll end up with a nice back strap. And what you can do is you can either roll, use that for a roast, or like what I'll do is I'll cut that into chops. That's where your chops are going to come from. But you can see on there you don't lose a lot of meat. There's not a lot of meat left that's real salvageable except for hamburger. And uh, we'll show you when we get inside after we get all this, this thing taken apart. How we get the silver skin off of here to send you off the back. We'll get this other side done and then we'll uh, go after this hind quarters. But anyway, that, that's the best part of the deer right there. Whenever they say back straps, that's what they mean right there. And you see how it went down along the ribs here? And what we do is, is we like the ribs to eat. So what I'll do is when I get this inside, when I get it all all taken apart, I'll cut these ribs loose and I'll section them up into about three or four ribs a piece and uh, they'll be barbecued. I'll barbecue them just like you would pork ribs. Take as much of the fat off here as you can, this tallow. A lot of people don't like that tallow. It's kind of dry, but we never seem to mind it too bad. And when you're making ribs, it kind of cooks out anyway. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to take this other side off I'm going to go ahead and uh, make my cut right down the back, just like so. Just follow that spine right on down. You can feel your knife hit the top of the ribs, and you got it made. What I do is I'll, I'll cut up there and then cut down as far as it'll go. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and you can see this line right here. That's the part of it, that's the top of the rib cage right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and right on across there. And you'll end up being able to pull that right on off. See how that kind of slips right on down there? Just peel that right on down. And you cut her loose. That's another back strap right there. You take and when you cut that, take that silver skin off of there. You'll kind of lay that on the table and take your knife and go underneath there. Then you just take and cut those at a diagonal. Just as thick as you I want. I want to get these hind quarters off. And uh, what I did is I, I switched the rope over to the hind tendon here. What I want to do is I want to get this board out of here. So I want to take it out. Lean it up against there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to cut this hind quarter loose right here. You can kind of see the joint in there. I'm going to cut it right down in through here. Then I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to kind of follow it on up in here. Uh, I'm going to get my knife. And I'm going to show you just what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take it. You can feel that. You can see this ball right here. That's... That's what you want to get after, right there, this ball. What I'm going to do is you can see that ball coming right out of the socket. You see it there? Now a bigger deer is going to be harder, harder to do. I'm going to go right up along the back here. I'm going to take that and just keep filleting her down. Try to get as much meat as you can with that. And you'll end up with a hindquarter, something like so. 
And uh, what we're going to do is when we get inside, is we're, we don't like our meat with the bone in, except for the ribs. We're going to take a peel these layers apart, and you'll end up, you'll see where your steaks and your roast come from. But anyway, this leg is going on the pile with the other stuff. So we got one more leg to go. One more hind quarter. So what I'm going to do, then I'm going to go right down the back here again. You see where it is. Made that cut. I'm going to turn that around. And make the cut right here. Try to keep that right like so. And what we're going to do is we're going to take it and, and uh, break that loose. I can see what I'm doing here. And cut this around here. And, uh, I'm getting this uh, where I can see it a little bit. There we go. You can see that ball right there. What we're doing is we're working that out of there. And if you get somebody to help you with this, you can get this done pretty quick. I think uh, my wife and I, we can butcher a deer, get it off the bone, and everything in about an hour and a half. And here's what you got left. You got your hind quarter there. You got the rest of the deer here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this right on there. And I'll uh, put that like so. I'm going to take this hind quarter down. What you want to do, you want to make sure that after you touch this, you don't go touching that meat with your hands. You still got this tarsal gland on there. There's your last hind quarter. And you end up with that deer all done, ready to go. So we're going to move this inside to the butchering table. And we'll take him apart and show you how we do that. Got this carcass ready to go in the shop. Because we want to get these filet mignons out of here. This is probably the best part of the deer right here. What we do is you just fillet those right on out of there, go right up against the backbone. You can see that. And they just come right on out. It's, uh, this is the best part of the deer right here. The filet mignons. On this deer they aren't all that big. But you get a big doe or a big buck, and I'll tell you what, that's a meal right there for two people. This is what you'd call the eye of a porterhouse or a, or a T-bone steak. And that's, uh, that takes care of those. You just take them, fillet that right on out of there. Okay, what we're doing is we got everything laid out here. We got the hind quarters, the front quarters. We got the two uh, filet mignons. I've got my knives. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take and there's a little bit of hair on here. Just take your butane torch and singe it off like so. Curls right up, doesn't leave any aftertaste. I mean, it does a good job. And uh, gets rid of all that unwanted hair. Doesn't take much to do it. So, okay. I'm going to turn that off and set it aside and get another knife here. But I've got a, I've got my cutting board here. We're going to work on the front quarters first. What we're going to do is we're going to cut this loose right here off the bone. This here is either going to be hamburger meat or stew meat. You can see how that come off of there in chunks like so. And there isn't a lot on the shoulders, front shoulders. You trim a lot of this meat up like so. Get it, just get it off of there. You don't want to waste anything. We have a lot of stew. We're, we're not really particular. If we like ground burger, 
but it, I think when you grind that burger up and make we try to eat healthy and if you put uh, pork or beef in it, it takes away what you want to do for being healthy so we eat a lot of stew okay we got that shank done right there uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try to get this off the bone here and you just go ahead and cut like so you go right on up against the bone you see how the bone is right here you can see that you can just take and peel that right away like so go down this other side and cut that away right there and what you end up with is you can you come from the back side like so Just kind of pull that away like so. Get that off the bone. And you can either use this for stew meat, burger, or if, if it's off a bigger deer, you can cut this loose right here. And uh, it makes a beautiful roast. You just what you do is you just uh, roll that right up, get some butcher string, take this fat off, just roll that right up like so, tie it up, put it in the oven with some potatoes and carrots and you got a beautiful roast. Now this here on the shoulder bone, shoulder blade, you, if you wanted to leave the bone in you could go ahead and saw that and make roast out of it. But what we do is we just go right down along that. You can feel that bone there. It goes down the middle of the shoulder blade. Go on each side of that, and you can just kind of fillet that right on off. There. So pretty easy to do. Then you just take that fat off too, as you know. You end up with meat that has hardly any fat on it. That's all fat there. What we're going to do is we're, we're going to fillet this thing right on out here again, on this side of the bone this time. You see how I see how I'm cutting that up loose from the bone? Just go ahead and just work that meat off of there. It doesn't have to be pretty because it's going to go in the grinder anyway. And just take your knife and just keep peeling her down. What I'm doing there is I'm getting all that off of there. Got all that meat there. You can either grind that or roll it up in a roast again. On a bigger deer, that'll be a bigger piece of meat. And you see how there's not much meat left on that shoulder blade. You can, you can get as much as you want off of there. Come along to the back side. And there's some meat on that too. Go ahead and take that right on off of there. Like so. And you end up, that's off one shoulder, the front leg. That's not bad. I'm going to set that aside. And I'm going to move on to it, the rear leg now. I'm going to move these back straps over. And we'll deal with those in a little bit. Okay, what we're uh, going to do here is start on this hind leg. This hind quarter. I'm going to cut some of this extra fat off right here. Just set that aside. So what you got to do... As you can see right here, the separation of muscle. You can take your knife just like so, and you can follow that separation. You can, you can actually peel those apart if you want. And you can take those pieces off of there. Or what you can do is you can take the whole bone out, and then cut that lengthwise into steaks. And what we're going to do is, for that, this purposes, that's what we're going to do, this film. We're going to go ahead and cut right down the inside here toward the bone. You can feel that bone right here. Just go right down to the knee. I guess that'd be the knee bone there. Just f peel that off the bone. Don't cut all the way through to the other side. Just uh, take that bone, just like so, on both sides. And uh, peel that away. And what you do is you just keep working that around. 
and end up cutting that loose on the back side like so and you'll end up with a nice big piece of meat here that you can either use for a roast or like I said steaks earlier you can what you want to do is now what you do is you cut around here like so you can see that knee joint right there just go ahead and cut around that and, and come in from the back side here like so come right on up to that knee joint like so and what we're going to do is we're going to roll that right on see that bone there you just take and cut that right away from there and you'll end up with this right here like so got got this big chunk of meat the thigh yeah, off of this and uh, this here piece of meat here you'll cut that loose like so that's like the cat our calf muscle what that's gonna be that's either gonna be a it makes a delicious roast it's got to be slow cooked because it's tough and uh, on a bigger deer that this is really a sizable piece of meat right here uh, and then you got the shank here this is all stew meat right here or burger you do the same thing just cut that off the bone and you'll get most of the meat off of there just put that in with your stew meat or your burger meat and there, there's that leg it's pretty darn clean I'm going to set that aside. What you can do here on this roast, on this uh, thigh, I'm going to cut a little bit of this off of here. You can take and separate these individual muscle groups if you want, like so. You can see how they're, they're in there together. You can take and separate those and then cut each one of those up into steaks. What I do here on this deer, and gets rid of some of that hair there, is uh, either for deer this size I'd roll that up into a nice size roast, but if you weren't going to make a roast out of it, you would just take and hold that together, just cut that into steaks about so wide, and you'd end up what I'll do on this one here is I'm going to make this one into steaks and uh, I'll show you how that how that's done. I'm going to get my cutting board out here. I'm going to set this right here. We'll use the other one for a roast. This one here is going to be steaks. I'll cut the end off here and this is going to be either a thick steak or I'm going to split it again and where it would go into the stew pot. Now your steaks look a little bit different on a bigger deer, but that's the way your steaks are right there. And this one here, just take and cut that just like so. And you end up with a nice, nice steak just like so. I'm gonna do, do another one here. And on a bigger deer, we're going to get down to where the bottom of the calf was, and you can use that for a roast or use it for steak. We're out. I finished cutting the steaks up here. So you got a nice pile of steaks, and what, what we'll do is we'll bag those up in freezer bags for our individual uh, amounts. For us, it'll be two steaks in a bag or three, and uh, the stew meat will go into a bigger bag because I use a lot of meat in the stew. But now what we're going to do is we're going to take these back straps like this right here and we're going to take and get the the silver skin they call it off the back uh, that's uh, sinew you just take just like you would a fish you just take and put your knife underneath there and follow right along you can uh, you see how that's coming off like so you can take and uh, 
just keep pulling it toward you and taking it right on off of there. And what that does is that'll take that right off. Otherwise, when you cook that up, it gets tough. And this is what you end up with it looking like when you're done. Something like so. And uh, you got yourself a nice piece of meat there. I'm going to take this little piece of fat off the back. And here you go. You got, got a nice uh, back strap. What we'll do, this one here we're going to cut different. I'm going to cut him in the steaks. I'm going to go ahead and cut him something like so. And you can cut him however wide you want. I like them about an inch. Just keep them going right down the line. A little bit of an angle to it. Just keep cutting. It's all about the same. And what you do got is you end up with this, these steaks like so. Kind of like almost like little medallions. But I'll tell you what, they're awfully good eating. You just go ahead and uh, put as many of those as you want in a bag for your individuals. And uh, just go ahead and keep cutting them up until you're all the way down. And there you got all those off one back strap. Okay, we're doing the other back strap right now. I'm getting her down there and ready to go. Just follow along the bottom. Just uh, pull it toward you. And take that off of there. You end up getting that silver skin off of there. I'll take this little bit of sinewy fat off the back there. A little bit up here. Now it's the same thing here. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you, if you wanted to, on a bigger deer, you could take and make a butterfly chop. Just cut her a little bit wide here. Cut her down till you're almost through. And you end up with a butterfly chop like so. Fold her in half. And you got yourself a butterfly pork chop, just like so. I'll do another one here. Just take and cut her a little wide, about an inch. About a half an inch in, just go ahead and cut her almost to the through. And just take and bend that right on over. You got yourself a butterfly chop. We'll do a couple more here. These are good. You get used to it, you'll be able to do them. Butterfly chop, just like that. Off a bigger deer, you end up with the one about like so. Really nice meat. We'll do one more. Get her like so. What this does is this saves you about sixty to hundred dollars from having to take it in and have it processed. If you have a high end grinder, you can grind your own burger. But uh, if you don't, you can even take the loose meat in and have it made into hamburger or sausage at the locker. Just get it real clean and take it in, and they'll be happy. Most lockers will be happy to do it for you. And what that's what we've got is we've got this deer reduced down to. Uh, We've got the two filet mignons, we've got the two back straps, we've got the thighs that are steaks and roast, and then we've got the stew meat. And some of this can be roast too if you have a bigger deer. You roll those up and make nice shoulder roast out of them or whatever. But anyway, what you've done is you've reduced that deer down to nothing. He's all ready to go. He's ready for the frying pan. Okay, another thing I wanted to mention is when you're bagging up your meat, Put your meat in there. I've got these chops in the baggie. Go ahead and close your zipper about three quarters of the way. Press all the air out. And then while you're lifting it up, close it. And what that does is that sucks that air out of there. And you end up with a nice tight seal. We'll do another one here. I'm going to go ahead and mark that deer chops. You open that up, put your put your handful of chops in there, whatever it's going to take to feed you. Make sure you, you don't get any meat in that zipper part. Go ahead and close her. Press the air out, you, and then as you're lifting it up, close it. What that does is that sucks the air right out of there. 
I'm going to do that one again. Go ahead and press the air out. Close her up a little. Press the air out. And then go ahead and close that up. You got all the air out of there. And that'll last a long time. We'll do another one here. Deer chops. Go ahead and put them in there. You got them right there. That's a nice mess nice right there. That's going to be some good eating deer. Uh, we take pride on how we take care of our deer. We try to, I've seen people just massacre a deer. I don't, I wouldn't want to eat the deer after they get done with it. Especially after the field dressing job they do and things like that. Just take your time and, and uh, be willing to learn some things. And It'll take a little while, more than one deer, to learn how to do it, but it's well worth it. Okay, what we got here, I'm pressing all the air out. Go ahead and press the air out. Go ahead and close her up some. Keep pressing. You can even roll it like, like so. Just go ahead and roll it. Whatever you can do to get that air out, then go ahead and close that. You end up, it's almost vacuum sealed. There you go, you end up with that.